A quick disclaimer. This video contains no spoilers for Wordle. In fact, I was even careful not to spoil the game for myself. I will explain how you can use the Explore Exploit algorithm to minimax your Wordle plays, and I will explain how to cheat at Wordle by viewing the code without showing you the actual code. This video is basically the instructions for how to optimize your play and how to even cheat should you want to, but you will need to follow the instructions to get those answers for yourself. Like many people online, I've been enjoying a daily dose of the game Wordle, the game where you get six tries to guess a daily word. When you guess, the letters that are in the word but not in the correct positions will highlight yellow and the letters in the correct positions will highlight green. The game is an ingenious variation on the Mastermind family of games, where one player creates a hidden pattern and the other player presents guesses to the pattern. Like Wordle, the player is then given indicators as to what colors exist in the pattern and which are in the correct positions. In a JavaScript version of Mastermind that I wrote, players can choose two to six colors in two to six columns. Depending on the options the player chooses, we can calculate the number of possible patterns in each game. Luckily, because order is important and repetition is allowed, we can use this simple formula to calculate how many possible color patterns are possible. So with five possible colors in Mastermind to the power of five positions to place them in, we get 3,125 possible combinations. With Wordle having 26 letters to the power of five positions to place them in, we get 11,881,376 possible combinations. But those are overwhelmingly going to be nonsense combinations that don't make words at all. The actual number of combinations is something we'll find in the code a little bit later on. When playing a mastermind family of game, the primary algorithm to use is called Explore Exploit. Time is a valuable resource in life, and we must constantly choose between spending our time exploring to learn new things and exploiting what we have learned to our advantage. In the book, Algorithms to Live By, author Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths describe how Explore Exploit can help you choose where you might want to eat. We may mindfully choose to explore new restaurants we haven't tried before to learn about them, or we may instead choose to exploit the knowledge of restaurants we have tried in the past to guarantee we get something we already know we like. In Wordle, your first word is always an explore. We have no information at this point, and the first word provides us data. Ideally, we would then choose to exploit that information, choosing a new word based on what we've discovered. But I often find it really hard to think of a word with the information I get from the first one. So an easier play for me is to try another explore. This is a word that usually won't fit in the information I have, but it does usually grant me greater information to exploit on turn three. Understanding the need to maximize our initial explore turns, the question then becomes, what words should we use? Wordle is so awesome because it's a very simple JavaScript application. This means we can view its source through any web browser. If we hit F12 or right-click and select Inspect Element, we can start exploring the code running the application. In Google Chrome, if you open the DevTools and click on Sources, you'll see a .js file. Click on that and click on the Pretty Print button to format the code in a way that's much easier to explore. This is a big reason why I love the JavaScript programming language for learning. Unlike programming language where you have to set up an environment to start developing, with JavaScript, you can just hit F12 and start coding. What you see here is not the Wordle code, but my own code from an NBAC spelling game I made for my kids. But it's very similar to what you will see in the Wordle JavaScript code. These variables are arrays, a programming variable that's a collection of things, in this case, words, that I can pull from to use in my application. Wordle has two variables storing arrays of words. The first of interest is TA. This is Wordle's total vocabulary in an alphabetized array. Whenever Wordle says you didn't enter a word, it's because that word is not in the TA array. At the time of filming this, the TA array has 10,657 words in it. That's a lot less than the nearly 12 million possible combinations we mentioned earlier. While the TA variable contains all the possible combinations, there's a second, much smaller array of words named LA. Looking at this array, you will immediately notice it's not in alphabetical order. That's because this array contains all the daily words in chronological order. 
and this is where you go if you want to cheat. If you know yesterday's word, you can search for it in the array. The word that comes after that? That's today's word, and the word after that is tomorrow's word. With 2,315 words in the array, Wordle can go over six years before it begins repeating the sequence. While it's interesting to know how to cheat, we know that cheating would completely eliminate any reason to play the game. But we can, if we want, use these arrays of words to determine what are the optimal exploration words to use. Again, no spoilers here, I'm not going to share the actual results with you, but here's a short JavaScript function I adapted from Stack Overflow to calculate letter frequencies in the array. This function accepts the word array as its first argument, and the letter position we want statistics on as the second argument. It loops through the array of words, splitting each one into an array of letters. It adds the first letter to our frequency array, if it doesn't already exist, and then increments the count of that letter if it does exist. To execute this, open your browser console with F12. You can then copy the arrays we covered earlier. This is not the actual array here, but one of my own. Paste the array list like so to set the variable. Then load the function like so, and then execute the function, feeding the word array as the first argument and the letter position as the second. Here I want to look at the first letter, so I set the argument to zero because we always start counting at zero in programming arrays. As an output, we get an array of all the letters that exist in this first position and how many times the function counted them. We can then do this for each of the other five letter positions to find which letters occur most often in each position and construct exploratory words based on these probabilities. You can also just look this information up, and I do actually recommend that because you will find some wonderful discussions and speculation on what the best words are and why based on this data. Finally, if you're interested in playing with your own Wordle app yourself, there are lots of great places to get started. There are now several Wordle clones built on different JavaScript stacks that are open source on GitHub that you can use to get started. If you're not interested in publishing your code, you can also simply save the Wordle code to your local computer and start editing it directly. You could replace the daily limit with a random word chosen each time the app loads, or you could add your own word arrays to allow choosing three, four, or six letter words. Reading code from other programmers is a fantastic exercise in improving your skills and expanding your cognitive toolkit. I hope you enjoyed this video, and it maybe inspires you to try some coding. Thank you for watching.